All right, I loved your film. Another year, absolutely divine. It, I can't stop thinking about it, and I, it's so embarrassing to admit, but I'm like, what happens to Mary? I want. I could have watched another two hours. I was so vested in those characters. Um, and what this subject matter also is very interesting to me. I've had um, gone through stuff with where I lost both my parents and people at. Um, Friends of mine are starting to lose, you know, the friends. And what what made you come up with this? What what was what's in your mind right now that you came up with this story? Well, you know, you can't really talk about a story as being about just one or no. a few things. I mean, it's about a whole lot of stuff that I suppose we have to admit adds up to what we call life, mm -hmm. really. Um, and uh, I suppose one of the things the film is about, but only one. One of the perspectives mm -hmm. by which to look at the film arises from the fact, well, I'm personally 67, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it is a, a look from the point of view of life where, you know, you start to see that time is finite, and you see, you wonder what you've achieved, and you you know, there's a great divide in the world between those of us that are privileged to have children and people who don't. Uh, and loneliness is very much what the film is about. You talk about what is going to happen to Mary, but it's also a film about love and togetherness and being fulfilled and being unfulfilled and a whole load of things that all impact on each other. Right, the kids get married. I, I was, it was just amazing just so moving, all of it, so moving, and the actors. The, tell me a little bit about what, for you, the importance of working with the same um, actors repeatedly through your films. It's not... The majority of them, though. Some. It's not important at all. I mean, I've made lots of films with brand new people. Mm -hmm. um, but, of course, if you do have a good working relationship and it's productive and creative, you do want to go back to people. And it so happens that in this film, in another year, there's a particularly high proportion of actors with whom I've worked before, and some of them, like Jim Broadbent and Ruth Sheen, and Leslie Manville, the most, who holds the record. Right. We've worked together nine times. Um, they are simply wonderful actors to work with. But, you know, David Bradley is in this film, who plays the, the, old, the older brother. And I've never worked with him before, but you wouldn't know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he looks, he looks like he might have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I think the important thing is that my... Um, films are the kind of work that suit certain sorts of actors, actors who are intelligent and original and committed and sophisticated and, you know, proper people who, you know, know about life and not just about being narcissistic actors, you know, and, and above all who are character actors with a sense of humour, you know, people who can play real people out there in the streets, and these people do it really... They're fantastic. Um, it's great to come back to them. Yeah, no, it's been... How are you feeling being back at camp? Well, I like camp, you see. I mean, contrary to expectations, I, I think it's rather wonderful. And the reason it's wonderful for me is because it's a celebration of cinema. It's a celebration of world cinema. And it's delightfully Hollywood-proof. <laughs> <laughs> Although the metal detectors and the everything new, I was like, oh, my God. Well, yes, I know, but that's yeah. not just... You, they get that everywhere now. You can't get in and, in and out of um, a lot of buildings in London without that. So that's just the 21st century, metal detectors. But no, I, I like it because it's, it's the coming together of people to celebrate movies. And I, I, I cherish that, you know. I mean, and, and certainly, you know, people say, oh, you know, but surely you hate the razzmatazz, the the you hate the, the, the kind of gloss and glitter. I don't have to do the razzmatazz in there. I mean, it's it's part of what it's about, but we, you know, we're not um, people like even even people like me are not Trappist monks. You know, we're in show business. We want our films to, to get out there, to get in front of audiences. You know, and that's what it's all about. Have you had a chance to see any other films? No, it, this, it's impossible. I normally go to you know regular film festivals and see loads and loads of films and talk to other film directors. That's the weird thing about Cannes. You just have to do a whole lot of things to stop you seeing other movies. I think I may see one tomorrow, possibly. 
and you don't really meet a lot of filmmakers. But it's because it's such a like it's such a city of activity that you you, you know uh, you're in your own thing. Mm -hmm. Now to make another year, how long from the time that you came up with the idea to the actual film and being here in camp? Very short. And actually, we got the green light for the film at the beginning of uh, 2009, and we completed it a year later. Very quick for one of my films. Uh, coming up with the idea is not really a part of the, uh, of the process uh, very often. I mean, it wasn't with this. I mean, because I've got constant preoccupations in my head, and I don't have to worry about the idea. They'll be there. So we got the money. We then put, got a cast together, and then we all went, we went off and spent do what we always do, which is to go away and discover what the film was. And that's a kind of improv rehearsal period, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that goes months on. and months spent really exploring and investigating and creating a world out of which I can then structure and um, shoot a picture. Now it shows, so the, the, the set alone, the house, is its own character. Brilliant uh, production designer, Simon Beresford, with, with whom I've never worked before. And of course, the great achievement of film, apart from all the others, is of Dick Pope, my wonderful cinematographer, who has created four seasons of the year in the most beautiful and profound way. And it's, it's magic cinematography. And so, so much of the film has to do with gardening and the cycles of life, obviously the seasons and the couple the getting older and the, their son finding love and and the gardening. Are you a big gardener? Is I'm not a gardener at all. I'm a flat dweller who lives in the middle of London opposite the British Museum. I mean, I don't have, yeah. I don't garden. I'm a rotten gardener, but that doesn't stop me yeah. appreciating the passion of these guys who are, are at one with the earth and who are about nurturing and about, I to say, it's about the cycling years. So after you're done with this, do you have something else you're going off to do? Yeah, sure. No, I mean, we're at various things. And, the most important thing that we want to do next um, is a major project to do a, a motion picture about um, Turner, the great uh, British landscape mm -hmm. painter, and the father of Impressionism, though he didn't know it. Um, and that's the major project that I want to do next. Uh, it'll take a while for it to happen, and it will have a much, much bigger budget than anything else I've ever done, including Topsy Turvy, which was, Topsy -turvy. was the other biopic. Thank you. Um, so yeah, uh, this really follows on from Topsy Turvy, but Turner was an amazing character, and what an amazing cinematic painter he was. You know? And so there's a movie in there. I want to do that next? That's great. Well, thank you for coming by. I'm thank a big you. fan of your films. Thank you very it's an much. honor to meet you. Enjoy yourself at Cannes. I will. I do. And good luck with the film. I, thank you. They were wildly applauding at the end of my screening at that 8:30 screening. So yeah. that's great. Great. Thank you. Yeah, keep up your pace. Thank you.